I wrote this for the AGD a few years ago. And basically, it was meant to summarize what we've just discussed. Because what I'm concerned about is many of the different things we do are labeled as unethical. And the reason for this is important because our lack of clear, objective data allows one dentist to determine treatment needs that another dentist would judge to be inappropriate. These disputes are often labeled as ethical issues and moral dilemmas, although they are not. They also can be misinterpreted as part of an entrepreneurial agenda that is not in the best interest of the patient's health and well-being. I think you could appreciate the meaning. What I hope in the future is something very different because what we're moving toward is better objective data, imaging, with better metrics so that much of our clinical decision making will hopefully not remain emotionally driven and empirical. We, we need to change this so that we don't keep making decisions that are up to what? Controversy. I'll give you a perfect example. On Monday morning, when you're back in practice, your first new patient is a very large individual. They sit in the chair, and the first thing they tell you is, oh, I don't like to be tipped back. And you say, well, OK, I have to tip you back a bit to do the exam. Let me know if this is OK. So I go start tipping the chair back, and the patient, stop, 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 stop. Too far, I got to tip the button, come back up again. Oh, too far, yes, too far, OK. Well, let's kind of ease it down. I go back, back, too far, too far, too far, back and forth and back and forth. I got five minutes into this, and I'm already getting exhausted. Then I go to do my exam, and I realize this, this man has, like, rubber cheeks. They don't even move. And he, oh, I, I open as wide as you can. He opens 23 millimeters. So is this all you can open? Yeah, everybody tells me I got a small mouth. So I go back to the distal of the upper second molar, and trying to get there is a chore because he's got this giant tongue. It's flailing around in there, and he salivates like a river. And I go back to the distal of the upper second molar, and there's now tissue from the tuberosity covering the marginal ridge. You can't even see it. So I take the Explorer because there's a huge DO alloy there, and I pick up the tissue with the Explorer, and I see a chip in the marginal ridge. Now, it's only in the amalgam, but it's a chip. I start thinking about it, thinking about it. I just take my Explorer, close that tissue back down, and I'm out of there. I'm not doing it. I don't want to do it. I'm thinking, ah, it's going to be OK. The next patient, same chip, I go, Easy exposure, nice person. I think we should replace this with a DO composite. It's on the schedule, ready to go. Now, that is not consistent. I didn't use the same criteria because I used the what? Sway. I made the decision by sway. No different than when you check margins. Sometimes you're more forgiving with the margins on the crowns you've done with the margins on the crowns other dentists have done. I mean, you already know, we are not consistent. And not being consistent doesn't allow us to be always emotionally healthy. This is a really big piece that we need to deal with. Because what's happening on the next page, you have this kind of dentistry being done. The people that are just confident, do it this way. I've been doing it this way for 30 years. Uh, the people that are really great speakers. I don't want you to go or leave here because I said so. You adopt things that you feel secure enough about based on the science so we could evolve. Otherwise, what happens to teaching centers is their identity is about their technique. Our identity is about the science so we can keep evolving. This is the only way we can have a future. And so for this future to help us I'm hoping, and it, that's why I was so excited with Barry being here and Tom being here, it's too easy for people to adopt this disregard syndrome. And they're not used to citing the literature, and it's just like, oh, that's the way I've been doing it. And the problem for somebody like Tom and Barry that's done it for so many years, you have a certain established credibility. And so it's easy to disregard maybe new things because they're not 
maybe what's comfortable, but we truly have to be sure that we have evidence to do that. Because icons have the power to lead and the power to mislead. It's really important that we are true to our understanding.